you I, in my letter to you. Yeah. you the, everything's in there, all the experiences I had. Yeah. We'll just go over a couple. You heard it, yeah. Go over a couple. No video. <laughs> go over a couple. No, no one. Tell us about your... What happened? I never had it. I never, I never, tell you, I never had it. Tell us about another experience you had. This station is off the air, and the off the air, this is off the air. Tell us another experience. No, this is off the air, and it's bedtime. Bedtime. Night. Tell us another ex uh, spiritual experience you had. You had an animal. Tell us about the healing. Tell us about the healing experience. Your grandpa Lou you had an experience. What was that? Ghost. What was that? They used to travel selling tools across the United States. He was going through somewhere back east. And it was uh, the winter time. Yeah. Had a car full of tools. And it's going through um, a forest area and he suddenly sees this woman run out in the front of the road and he said to swerve he almost and he knew he he thought he hit her got out of the car went back he couldn't find her anywhere got into the next town and he reported that he hit someone and they, they said he described who he saw and he said that you just saw a ghost hmm. she's well known in the area can you describe um and when i told him about it he didn't remember can you describe in detail about he told me that the ufos and how old you were where it was exactly when you saw it no it was in the sky can you tell me like how old you were and where you were i was 14 years old yeah i was <laughs> i was <laughs> i was standing on the back porch of your grandma edith's house and your grandpa right. And I'm looking up, and I had my binoculars. They just got my your grandpa Lou got me binoculars. He got me these binoculars, and I was out there looking up there, and suddenly saw all these these uh, three or four lights. Suddenly, and I thought, oh, it was an airplane flying over. And then one one shoots this way, one's going that way, one's going this way. And I said, no way, is that a plane? Because it's shooting different directions. And they're going around and hovering and going like this very slowly. And then after about maybe five minutes, they just shot off, disappeared completely out of the sky. And until recently, when I, I went and went online and picked the date that I thought it was in 1954, uh, I found an article and, and verified that the sighting was seen over Hollywood next day in the newspaper headlines. UFO seen over Hollywood, and yeah, it was it was all on the radio and everything, and um, they the the Air Force explained that they had a, a a military plane flying near Hollywood, refueling in midair over Hollywood, well supposedly further out in the desert, but it was right over Hollywood. It was not, and they don't do refueling over areas like that. They don't. They do it in in remoter areas. They do not do it in populated areas. In case well, folks so, can't move that, that, that. And and then they have these great big bright lights. They said they were shining, and and they just and that was their explanation. And what I saw and what they explained were two different things. Right. So I know they were lying. Any other things? Um, no, that's uh, it. No. Okay. No. Yes. Thank you. One other thing. We used to have a guy come into the shop. Uh, his name was Harvey Lemke. He was uh, worked for the government. And he, in fact, I bought my first car from him. Mm. He was an engineer, too, as a hobby. And he had been into a, um, bu a Air Force bunker, or not, um, hangar. And he actually said he saw the flying saucer that they had captured that crashed. Roswell. In Roswell, 1939? Well, I don't remember what he said it was, but they had one. And they had, they were trying to copy the technology. It had to do right. with magnetic technology. Back magnetic technology, and they had this guy on a platform, and he actually seen him. He was up 12 feet in the air, and it's shooting around, and he's in this platform floating up there. And this is back in 1958. Harvey Lemke. He's dead now, but he had a dis. He was a, he had a, was a father when he was much older, and his daughter was uh, of Down syndrome. And we went out. He lived in Pasadena. We went out to him. I bought his 1948 Packard car, a Plymouth, 48 Plymouth, and that was my first car. Yeah. And but he was the guy that t first told us about 
actually seeing well, the, the East Flying Saucer, actually seeing the American doing their own um, uh, copying of it, uh, technology, and so if they've got that far at that time, mm -hmm. imagine what they have now exactly. at this time mm -hmm. that you don't know about. Thank you. What year was that? 1958. And what year? Roswell was 1939. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know if this was a Roswell or another saucer. Right, land. This is other land. They're yeah, every day. They're they're, they're, every they day. probably had loads of crashes. Mm -hmm. You see, they, you know, not all of them were good drivers. <laughs> Pilots. <laughs> they used to get drunk on the job, you know, all these dimensions. The guy, <laughs> the guy he says, well, well, what dimension am I, third or six? Oh, wowee! <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. Okay. There you go. And I'll that is the end of today's story. story's harmony. I know that one's wrong. What? Oh,